Airways' enormous modernization scheme goes full steam ahead. Of the estimated 1,200 million pounds to be spent in 15 years, one third has now been committed. Work is on schedule. The aim is to make British Railways the best in the world. Throughout the program, the technique is modernity itself. Surveying of new routes, extensions, alterations is largely by air. Over big areas, such as the Kent Coast electrification scheme, aerial camera survey does the work more efficiently and far more quickly than could be done by ground surveyors. The films, taken so as to overlap slightly, make a complete picture of the area covered. From this picture, southern region engineers worked out details of plans necessary for the Kent Coast scheme and then submitted them for expert examination by the Southern Area Board, its chief engineers and top executives. One of the earliest parts of the railway modernization program, it was urged forward by Sir Philip Water, the board chairman. Wherever required by Chief Operating Superintendent S.A. Fitch and his team, models were made. Though only part of the 15-year plan, the Kent Coast scheme is a tremendous undertaking. The cost will be 45 million. 250 route miles will be electrified, and the first phase of the scheme, as far as Ramsgate, Dover and Sheerness, will operate by June 1959. By 1962, all lines in Kent will have been electrified, and the Kent Coast Line will not only carry the heavy and always increasing holiday traffic, it will also improve residential services for people working in London. Diesel locomotion, welcomed by the head of the British Transport Commission, Sir Brian Robertson, is now being established on main lines that are not electrified. This is another aspect of the modernization program. Easily driven, easily and quickly maintained, the diesel nowadays has overwhelming advantages over the steam locomotive. And paradoxical as it may seem, it pays the railways and the country to run trains on imported oil rather than on home-produced coal. Still steam-hauled by magnificent engines are most of the crack trains of the western region. It's no use washing whiter if the Cornish Riviera passes the clothesline. The famous King Class locomotives pull another western region flyer, the Bristolian. Fastest train in Britain, the Bristolian at times exceeds 100 miles an hour. Its average for the run, 67 miles an hour. It's sad to think that superb locomotives of the King and Coronation class must be superseded. Drivers who know their ways and moods as if the engines lived are loath to bid them goodbye. But soon many will drive diesels. Classes are held to teach them the mysteries of the oil age. And as most men nowadays understand motor cars, the diesel isn't a mystery for long. On main lines, the big diesel engines are gradually replacing the steam loco. In pairs, they've often pulled the Royal Scott to Glasgow in the last eight years. On this region, as on others, diesel power will largely displace steam, and eventually the main lines will be electrified. Manufacture of the electric parts of diesel electric power units is going ahead with all speed. The diesel motors drive dynamos to generate current for the electric motors, which are the final drive to the wheels. Close by, another famous works is at full pressure, turning out 1,000 horsepower diesel electric locomotives. Because diesel engines need so much less maintenance than steam, and don't have to wait to get steam up, 130 can do the work of over 200 steam locomotives. Another diesel development, using two or more power units along one train, is already in service on express intercity routes, here running between Birmingham and Cardiff. It's first class travel even in the second class coaches. No smoke, no dirt. The key to fast, safe, heavy traffic is modern signalling. At York is the half million pound all-electric finger and thumb signal box, controlling 33 miles of track and all traffic in and out of York's 16 platforms. 27 men now do what 70 once did in the eight old-type signal boxes. The money saving is 20,000 a year. It's safer and handles more traffic in less time. Also in York is the Railway Museum, showing how far we've come in 100 years. Third-class travel on the Bodmin Line, Cornwall, round about 1840, was an ordeal. All the same, it was then a miracle to go by steam along the Iron Road. 
nor was it exactly luxury in the first class. Back in 1829, the Pioneer engine showed that Stevenson's dream had come true. But look at the monster Deltic, 106 tons, 90 miles an hour, 3,300 horsepower. All spruced up, it was at Houston on exhibition with the train of the near future, possessing a general standard of comfort not bettered anywhere in the world. It won't be the designer's fault if passengers don't think it quite a cut above home comfort. Before long, railways will only carry coal to industrial areas, not burn it themselves. It's less wasteful to use oil on railways for the time being, till the day when nuclear-generated electricity helps the main lines to be electrified. Meanwhile, the diesel holds the fort. At Paddington, the first diesel hydraulic locomotive built in British Railways' own workshops was named after the chairman of British Transport Commission. The general manager of the Western Region, Mr. K.W.C. Grand, was in charge of the ceremony. Sir Brian Robertson, as head of British Railways, is at the helm of the vast modernization program. Nothing on comparable scale has been attempted ever in Great Britain before. In vision, imagination and application, the scheme is abreast of this day and age. To say farewell to the steam locomotive was one of the many bold decisions in the campaign to turn the railway system of Britain into the best in the world.